NASA has developed a new strategy for reaching the moon's south pole. The agency is once again collaborating with Firefly Aerospace, which remains the sole American company to have achieved a successful lunar spacecraft landing with their Blue Ghost. One mission this past March, achieving a successful landing at the moon's south pole, has consistently presented challenges for NASA and their commercial collaborators. Intuitive Machines, another American firm, has made two landing attempts at this location over the past two years, both ending in failure. The Firefly Blue Ghost previously made contact with the lunar surface in the American sector of the moon's northern hemisphere. This represented a considerably simpler undertaking when compared to the challenging topography and persistent shadows characteristic of the South Pole. However, NASA evidently has confidence in their capabilities and is entrusting Firefly with no fewer than two valuable payloads for this expedition. Blue Ghost will transport a pair of newly designed lunar rovers to the South Pole. The first is designated Moon Ranger. It is being created by NASA's Marshall Space Flight Research Center, working alongside Carnegie Mellon University. Moon Ranger measures approximately the dimensions of a carry-on suitcase, and it has been engineered to independently explore the lunar south pole while searching for water ice. The rover's stereoscopic camera system will construct three-dimensional maps of the lunar terrain that enable it to function with complete autonomy even during periods when communication with Earth is impossible. The second rover participating in this mission is being constructed in Canada. The vehicle, which has not yet been named, is a similarly compact four-wheeled platform of luggage proportions that will pursue new findings on the lunar surface. It represents the Canadian Space Agency's first significant contribution beyond their renowned robotic arms. This rover will also be searching for evidence of water ice at the moon's south pole while simultaneously measuring radiation levels and temperature fluctuations at the south pole. What makes the Canadian rover particularly remarkable is its use of solar power, combined with a battery substantial enough to venture deep into permanently shadowed craters on the moon and function in complete darkness for as long as an hour. These locations are precisely where we have the highest probability of discovering substantial deposits of water. This capability also indicates that unlike most rovers, this one should have the ability to endure the 14 days of lunar night and reactivate for another. Lunar Day of Scientific Exploration The Firefly Blue Ghost Lander itself will transport three scientific instruments. One instrument is the Laser Ionization Mass Spectrometer. It will utilize a robotic arm and a scoop to gather a sample of regolith material and then subject it to a laser blast to decompose the material and achieve an exceptionally detailed analysis of its composition down to the atomic and isotopic level. Similar to previous American lunar landing vehicles, Blue Ghost will be outfitted with NASA's stereo cameras for Lunar Plume Surface Studies instrument. This is part of their continuing research into how spacecraft engage with the fine dusty regolith that blankets the moon's surface. And like other landing craft as well, this one will be equipped with NASA's Laser Retro Reflector Array, which essentially enables them to direct a laser beam at the lander from Earth that will reflect all the way back and deliver an extremely precise location reading for where Blue Ghost ultimately lands. This South Pole mission is planned for launch as early as 2029 and will represent the most challenging test for Firefly to date. But it will not be their sole return trip to the moon this decade. Even prior to the successful completion of Blue Ghost 1, NASA had already designated them for additional commercial lunar payload missions. The subsequent mission is scheduled for launch next year and will send Blue Ghost to the far side of the moon, which is also frequently called the dark side of the moon. In reality, it is not actually dark. It simply remains invisible from our vantage point on Earth, but it remains distinctly different from our familiar near side. Blue Ghost 2 will deliver a European communications satellite designated Lunar Pathfinder into lunar orbit before descending to the far side region. Upon arrival there, it will deploy a payload called the Lunar Surface Electromagnetics Experiment Night. This instrument will conduct radio astronomy utilizing the Moon as a barrier to filter out radio interference originating from Earth and obtain an unobstructed observation of the early universe. Then for Blue Ghost 3 in 2028, Firefly will visit an enigmatic region of the Moon's northern hemisphere identified as the Grutuizen Domes, a geological formation that has confounded observers for many decades. The majority of the Moon's geology seems to have been created by thin basaltic lava. It spreads across the surface like oil and typically does not leave behind any clearly defined features.
However, these domes seem to have been created by a thick, silicic lava that flows more like peanut butter and solidifies into dense granite-like rock. The puzzle here is that silicic lava only occurs on Earth in locations where you have a collision of tectonic plates in the presence of water. The moon lacks tectonic plates or liquid water. Therefore, these domes genuinely should not exist according to our current understanding, which suggests there is likely an unknown factor at work. That is precisely what the Blue Ghost 3 mission is going to attempt to determine. To accomplish that, the lander will be furnished with six scientific instruments, some of which will be mounted to a lunar rover from an as yet unidentified industry provider. At this time, we are uncertain who that will be, but we do have this particularly intriguing new rover design that was recently unveiled as a collaboration between the American companies Interlune and Astrolab. It has been designed to locate and gather a rare element on the moon designated as Helium-3, which holds potential as a fuel source for nuclear fusion that could supply the Earth with unlimited energy. The vehicle is built upon Astrolab's Flex Rover platform, which will tow the resource harvesting apparatus being developed by Interlune. Before they proceed directly into mining the moon for nuclear fuel, the two companies will launch a test rover. As soon as the end of this year, that will be delivered to the surface. By the Astrobotic Griffin Lander, which is scheduled for launch in November, on a Falcon Heavy rocket, for their initial mission, Interlune is outfitting the Flex Rover with a specialized camera that was developed in collaboration with NASA. It will assist the company in estimating how much Helium-3 is contained in the lunar regolith. In essence, what the rover will be seeking are minerals that are abundant in titanium. These are thought to be associated with the presence of Helium-3. Consequently, if we discover one, then we have likely discovered the other. Once they have gained a clearer understanding of precisely how much Helium-3 they can anticipate finding, Interloon is planning to send a follow-up rover in 2027 that will be concentrated on sample collection in what they characterize as ideal harvesting sites. The company is also engaged in identifying prospective customers for the Helium-3 resources that could be returned from the moon on future expeditions. In May, Interloon announced a partnership with the U.S. Department of Energy which is committed to purchasing up to 3 liters of helium-3 by 2029. And simultaneously, Interlune also announced an agreement with a quantum computing startup called Maybell that desires to purchase thousands of liters of helium-3 annually from 2029 to 2035. This demonstrates some of the applications for helium-3 beyond just nuclear fusion. Demand is increasing for quantum computers, national security, and medical imaging as well. And while there is some helium-3 that could be extracted from Earth, the only method to satisfy projected demand in the future will be from the Moon. As of this moment, Interlune is still a very small startup with a workforce of approximately 25 people. Nevertheless, they are positioning themselves to become the first U.S.-based commercial mining operation on the Moon. And they are not limiting themselves to just helium-3. Interlune intends to harvest industrial metals, rare Earth elements, and water to sustain a long-term human presence on the moon. How precisely they are going to accomplish that remains unclear. The company states that they have a patent-pending technology that enables them to deploy smaller and lighter technology to the lunar surface that requires 10 times less power than alternative systems to operate. That promise alone has already secured the company over $18 million in funding. And if anything, this is likely just the first sign of a lunar gold rush that is approaching. If companies like Firefly can ultimately provide a reliable and affordable landing platform to transport equipment onto the moon in any location we select, then the resource industry will follow closely behind. Naturally, scientific exploration will take priority for now. But make no mistake, there are valuable resources on the moon, and people are going to determine a way to extract them.